We have made it to another Sunday to worship God in spirit and truth. I'm Dr. Terry Webb, and I have the honor of serving as pastor of this church. Be willing to relate, relax, and release, and let God have his way with you today. Let me have a word of prayer. Most precious Heavenly Father, we the saints of God united here today to worship you in spirit and in truth. Dear God, we ask that you impart us with your Holy Spirit, dear God, as we seek to worship you today. Although we're very few in numbers because of COVID, we just ask you, dear God, to put your blessing upon us and those who may be out in a virtual environment worshiping with us, dear God, that you bless them in a mighty way, dear God, because they didn't have to tune in to us, but they did. And we just thank you, O oh Lord, for another opportunity to continue to give us the strength, the guidance, the focus, and the direction we need to stay under your protection and continue in the way that you would have us to go. Dear God, we ask that you order our steps in your word, dear God, that you open our minds and our hearts to be able to receive all that you have for us, that you place no limitations on us such that we no longer, dear God, are afraid to do anything. Take away that spirit of timidity. Take away that fear of doubt, that fear, that fear and that shame, dear God, that's holding many Christians hostage, dear God, today. Let everything proceed as it should next week, dear God. Let there be a smooth transition of power in regards to the presidency. Let the cities not be in uproar and upheaval as they have been in recent times, dear God. We ask your hedge protection around us. And if you see fit for that, protect those under the sound of my voice and keep us safe from her harm or danger. Continue to bless Christian Unity Baptist Church in a mighty way. As we go forward, surrender it all unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Voices of praise. Follow me 
all the days of my life. And I would go well in the house of the Lord forever.
service. Yes. It's another day that God has made for us to come together to rejoice and be glad in the works of God in spirit and in truth. And it's good to see a few of you who have been infirmed uh, back with us again. Two in numbers don't matter because God says we're two or three God in his name. And prayerfully, within the next year, we'll be all be able to be elbow to elbow once again anyway. Either by God working through the vaccine or God working in the way that he has planned. Either way, God is going to work it out. And we are going to continue this worship God in spirit and in truth and all that we do because we know that our God is an awesome God. He reigns from the heavens above. We're not going to let anything or anybody deter us from worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Voice of praise did an awesome job this morning. I want to thank them for helping out with devotion. I let you know that God gives you what you need when you need it. He always has a ram in the bush. Amen. Amen. With all that being said, saints, let's get ready to worship God and give it. This financial committee and us just come forward. Give unto God as God has blessed you. Because God has been mighty good to each and every last one of us. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Because some of y'all got those little checks they're giving out from the government. <laughs> Now, a word of caution. Put it in the bank. Let it sit for a while. Let it marinate. Unless you really, 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 really need it. Oh, well, I don't want to be the one to say that. But you can tithe it and give it to the church. I know this personally that if you give unto God, if you give unto God, God will take care of you. As I've shared with you a number of times, when my wife and I first got married, she lost a good job. And I went to work at my other job, and they, they put me on full time without me asking. God will always take care of you if you do what God has called and asked you to do. Be a good ser servant to God and a good steward of all that God has given you, because God is an awesome God. Know this, that God is always willing, and God is always ready to come to help his children. Those of us who commit our lives to him, You'll be surprised at the things that God will do for you. God will make a way somehow. I'm always saying that people wonder, why do you say that so much? Because I am somebody that knows personally what God can do for those who are downtrodden and heavy laden and who may not even believe that tomorrow is even coming. I know that God is able. I know that my God is real. I feel it each and every day as I commune with him. We may look outside and it may seem really dark outside, but we need to understand that God is the way, the truth, and the what? Light. So no matter what you're facing, no matter how it looks, God is always there with us. So let us not walk with our heads hung down. Let us not be afraid of a test or an evaluation or the situations that are being thrown at us. Because everything that we go through is to make us better prepared for that transition that day on that great good no morning. Understand this, saints. That doesn't mean that we won't fall down. It just means that with the power of God, we will get back up. We have to understand this, that God is not uh, in the business of making us have a resort-type life where you sit back on the beach and everything goes the way you want it to go. Because some of us, truth be told, our heart ain't right. And if everything went the way we wanted to go, a lot of devastation can be brought in society that is unnecessary. So God knows what's best, and God gives us what is best for us. So at this point in time, we're getting ready to go into altar call as the deacon prepares to do altar call. Let's give God his due. You can stand where you are. Just be socially distant. And if you're at home, if you can stand, please stand. As we render prayers unto God, let God know that you love Him. Let God know that you revere and respect Him. Let God know that you can. Deacon Gilly. Good afternoon, saints. Still good morning. Uh, today is a good day. Whether we realize it or not, we have to through January already. And, and today we just want to pray for those that are still dealing with 2020. Uh, some things happened last year that wasn't good for any of us.
Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you once again this morning with bowed heads, thanksgiving in our heart, and, and, and a praise on our mind, dear Heavenly Father, just to be able to give you worship and, and, and give you praise, God. I also come to you asking for forgiveness, Father, for anything that I've done that was not of you this past week. Uh, forgive me. Whether I knew I was doing wrong or I didn't know I was doing wrong. Father, I also want to thank you for protecting me from the dangers that I did see and the ones that I didn't see. Like you shot down the street around the corner from my house. Or uh, a few weeks ago when they shot up the house directly across the street from my salon. I thank you, Father, for protecting me from those things. God, today we just want to pray for a new tomorrow. And uh, right now, God, you said things uh, uh, have a season in and of itself, and things that we have a tendency to hold on to, it blocks our communication and our mind with you, God. So today we're asking that you help us get rid of whatever it is that's got us bound up from yesterday, that, that, that it hits us from coming into your presence today, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for this moment right here. Right now, this is all that we have, God. You said don't worry about tomorrow because it has enough worries in and of itself. But if you concentrate on what we have right now, be grateful for what we have right now. Be thankful for what we have right now. Father, you said you give us more things to be thankful for. Today, God, I ask that you bless those that are still in bereavement. Our family lost a patriarch or matriarch, dear Heavenly Father, on my wife's side. God, we ask that today that you just touch, heal, and deliver, dear Heavenly Father, those that are all going in mourning this day, dear Heavenly Father. We ask that you ease our hearts, send that comforter down, and be able to help us wipe our tears away and press on for the high calling in you, Christ Jesus. If they had a choice, they'd never come back to this place again, God. Right now, Aunt Pearl ain't got no worries. She don't have no sicknesses. She's up there cooking biscuits and chicken salad for you, God. We thank you right now, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you continuously gird up the God man that you put over this ministry, the Heavenly Father. Continue to strengthen his help me that you put by his side, God. We thank you for the musicians that's here. Father, we thank you for the this stuff that we didn't have all winter. God, it was 40 degrees yesterday, and here it is in the middle of January. God, can't nobody say that you don't exist. Because any other time, God, we'd be wasting the snow. We'll be having on 16 pairs of clothes, but I say people out there open toe shoes a couple of days ago. God, maybe they just ain't right in their mind or just something that they're feeling in their spirit and they can still do. God, we ask you that you continuously protect us from this invisible uh, uh, predator that we have out here. We thank you for the vaccine, but God, you know we're theory about doing some things. But let us know that whatever it is that's coming around to us together, that is for our good. Let us do our homework on some of these things. Let's not just go on what society deems that's good or bad for us. Uh, God, you say study to show yourself approved, but it's just not in the word. But we have to make sure that these things that we're ingesting in our bodies and that we're taking that the government say is a vaccine that we make sure that we do our homework and that it's being tested on us and being tested on our people. God, I thank you for this day. A day that real folks say has been coming since the day of time that we've really never seen no more. I want to pray for our sports team this morning too. Dear God, we've come along with it. It has been an inspiration to this city that anything can happen.
once again worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And we just need to make it a point that we continue to give God the glory and tell God that we love him. Tell God that we need him and spend some time with God. I know many of us are working at home. We have the privilege of working at home. But sometime when we were at work in our offices, we was calling on God anyway. Amen. Many of us to avoid some consequences that we don't want to do. But we said, Jesus, help me. Oh, Lord, help me. God, give me the strength to not see if they can make it to tomorrow. But through the power of God, we're at home now. And we need to still call on Jesus. Because yeah. our paychecks are still clearing. Our benefits are still benefiting us. And we are still making it. God is making a way out of no way. The times that we're in now are, are uncertain, and we should be certain that God knows the end already. God has already inspired this plan, and he already knows how it's going to work out. He knew that the Hebrews would wander in the wilderness for that long. He knew that they would be in captivity for that long. He knew how long Daniel would be where he was. He knew that at the end of it, Daniel might not go back. He also knew that we would be subjected to formal slavery. I'm saying formal slavery. Uh, there's still some questions out on whether or not we are still quite free. But they're, they're on formal slavery. God knew that this was going to occur. And there was something that we learned from all of these things. But in the midst of all of these things, there was something that was a common thread that took place that still is needed today in our society. It is something that took place that gave us the power and the strength and the tenacity to push forward and to keep believing that it was absolutely possible that in the by and by that this would work itself out and it does not have to stay the way it is. That power is given to us by something that God left with us. And even in the Old Testament before Jesus' time, there was something that was done by the individuals that were the Hebrews and beyond and even the Gentiles that gave them the strength to get up and endure the crack of master's whip. There was something that gave them the strength to get up when they were wandering in the wilderness. There was something that gave them the strength to get up when they were slaves in a foreign land when they realized it was more of them than it was of the other people that they started to demise, seek to do their demise. There was something that was done that gave David the power to be able to stand up against giants as a little man. There was something that gave Esther the power to be able to go out and confront the enemy and the king. There was something that was done that made these people speak boldly as Paul did in the times when he was out ministering. There was something that John the Baptist did in the strange behavior that some would say he had, even locusts and honey, that gave him the strength to go out and to be bold and do the things that God had called him to do. Saints of God, we all have access to this power and this power is supernatural. Amen. This power is given to each and every last one of us, but the trick here is that a whole lot of us is kind of like this. Can you bake a cake and don't use eggs? Mm. No. Can you bake a cake and don't use sugar? No. That's a nasty donut. But if you bake something, you have to have all of the ingredients. And see, the thing about it is, what I'm talking about, I'm going to give you a clue in a minute, is this. Is that if you have belief, but you don't have trust. Mm. All right. Okay. If you know the word, but you don't understand what it means. All right. I can recite anything. Yes. But I don't know what it means. Yes. You saw that with the Ethiopian eunuch. Yes. If you are an individual who prays but don't have expectancy. Mm. If you're an individual that goes to church but leave the church like you've never been in All the right. church. Mm -hmm. If an individual can look at someone and see that they have a need that you can meet and you just walk on by, then something ain't quite right. Mm -hmm. See, there's something that is going to happen in our scripture today, and we'll get to it. I'm Baptist, so I got to read it to be in, in accordance with what we do. But the thing about it is, is this. It's something that is very supernatural about the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. All right. Prayer of the righteous availeth much. We hear that a lot, but we work focus so much on availeth that we don't ever look at what it means to be righteous. All right. Okay. A whole lot of people are just mumbling stuff. It's just like, 
when I was in high school, we would be sitting in study hall trying to survive the snowball fights and the violence. And we would be in there trying to survive, going to hip, hop, hip, 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 hop, you know, stop, rock to the bang, bang, boogie. Right. Now, Pastor, you know that? Yeah. Stop it. Quit acting like you got wings and you flying around somewhere. <laughs> the thing about it is, I don't know what hip, hop, hip, 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 hop, hop, don't stop. James Brown, did you really understand what he's saying? Come on, give me the hoot, ah! You don't know what they're saying, but you said it. And that's what a lot of people are doing with scripture. That's what a lot of people are doing with their faith. They really don't believe. When you pray, you're supposed to believe that God is going to answer you. But you must pray in the right spirit. And, and, and when they say the prayers of the righteous, that means you need group. All right. That means you're supposed to come together and pray. But I'm going I'm to stop here. Hopefully I whet your appetite and not fall asleep for at least 15 minutes. But the thing about it is, is that saints of God, let me have a word of prayer. Dear God, I ask that you help me to minister to the people that you put before me. And help me, dear God, to be all that you call me to be, dear God, such that I can do all that you've asked me to do. Dear God, manifest your presence with us and help us, dear God, to encounter you today in spirit and in truth. We just surrender all unto you, thanking you, dear God, for everything you have done, you can do, and you will do. For blessing Christianity Baptist Church, increasing our territory, and helping us to become better Christians, better stewards of the resources you've given us, and becoming better in walking in our faith and not by our sight. We ask you, dear God, to touch those who may be wayward and on the fence as to whether or not Jesus is real. That let us be shining examples and let them know that God is real. Let us be that light in the darkness for those individuals. Let us be willing to truly take evangelism to a level that it has never been before in this church. Let us be willing to share our faith with individuals as much as we share our opinions, which matter not. And share our attitudes, which we should not share. Allow us to share our faith, dear God. Allow us to demonstrate our faith in how we live our life. Not car in the corner worrying about what's going to happen, but walking boldly in victory and expect, expecting you to come into our lives and intervene when we need you. Yes, Lord. We just thank you today, O oh Lord, for everything you have done, can do, and will do. Bless the service and everyone today and empower and embolden and speak in my spirit, dear God, such that I can have the supernatural power that I need to minister to your people. This is your church. I'm nothing more than a tool. Leave me sing with sweat as I execute this task you have before me. These are our blessings, guys. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Saints of God, we're going to talk today for a little while from Acts 4. I know the Browns game is on in, in a few hours, and people are nervous and antsy, and I don't want to give you a split personality. But the thing about it is, is that we're going to go to Acts chapter 4. We're going to read verses 23 to 31. And then we're going to talk for a while about the power of prayer is supernatural. And it does amazing things. Acts chapter 4, verses 23 to 31. But for the sake of time, I'm only going to read 31 for us here. And it captures what we're going to talk about. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God boldly. May God have a blessed reading to hearing his holy word. Please be seated. See, saints of God, we're going to go 2331, but I don't want you to stand up that long. But the thing about it is, is this. We have a situation growing in America that has raised this ugly head. It is one of divisiveness, blatant racism, and discord among the people. In the past year or four years, there has been greater attention given to the brazen disregard for human life. People have senselessly lost their lives at the hands of those sworn to protect them. There has been an insurrection in our nation's capital unlike any before. An invisible enemy is afflicting our people. A vicious viral enemy has altered the trajectory of society for the near and distant future. Don't nobody know when we're going to go back to what we used to be if we ever go back to what we used to be. If you study history, it's not ever going to be like it used to be. Consequently, calling into question the viability of some economic platforms is now in question. Some economic platforms are diminishing, dwindling, and going away. But I've been reading and researching, there's a lot of new economic opportunities that are opening up and creating millionaires and billionaires. Equally, the delivery of service of education has changed possibly for perpetuity. Worship services are now becoming virtual, 
People are now able to worship God at a worship service at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 a.m. in the morning. Nonetheless, all of these issues all lead to those of us who know the Lord to one conclusion. Instead of an insurrection and threats of violence, we need an Acts 431 type of prayer when the world is against us, as the world will be against us. I don't know why some Christians really believe that the, their life is supposed to be so orderly, so stress-free, so pain-free. It really bothers me when people who are economically challenged talk about going on vacation and recreating. When you come back, you have stress because now you've got to pay for aviation. The thing about it is, is that everything that you did should have been doing something else. I'm not against recreation. But it should be something that when you're concluded with it, you're not stressed out about how you're going to subsidize it. Right. Right. When it appears that the world is against us, we need to come together to pray and let the Holy Spirit speak to us and lead us in the way we should go. We must be as bold in our faith as the enemy is about his lack of respect of our Lord and Savior. The lack of respect of our personal lives, limbs, and liberty. The lack of respect to use chokeholds that end life. The lack of respect to discharge a metallic lead-based substance into the body of someone who is not firing back at them. Mm -hmm. Someone who has a lack of respect to, to actually institute policies that will impoverish one segment of the population and allow one segment that can pay taxes to never pay taxes. All right. Let us come together as prayer warriors and pray to the Lord and shake our society as our scripture did. You know how we, we need to shake up this society. We need to not stir it. We need to shake it yeah. with the supernatural power that we have in praying collectively. These saints of God came together collectively and prayed. And the thing about it is, is this. This was about six to eight weeks after these exact same people had crucified our Lord and Savior. Yes. And now they were confronted with them who were planning acts to terminate them. Because they didn't want the message of Christ to get out. But yet and still, this is how powerful God is. And this is where we fall short in our prayers. We want stuff to go our way. We want stuff to stop. Yes. We don't want to experience any discomfort. We don't want to experience any pain. Do you realize that in the midst of pain and discomfort, that God is the closest to you? Do you realize that when you're at your low, God is ready to pick you up? Until you've been knocked down, God can't lift you up. It is when we are at this point that God can minister directly to many of us. And the thing about the scripture is this is so powerful because when they got together to pray, and you got to think about it, they were under persecution. Yes. And persecution ain't an East Coast, West Coast brief with some rappers. <laughs> persecution is that they found them worshiping as a few of us all together. And people came in with the intent to hunt them like we do animals for prey. They were planning to execute them, exile them, stone them, beat them. Many of us, if we saw a stone in the yard, we wouldn't want to move it. And let alone somebody throw that. In, in the succession, the rapid succession of people throwing them. But check, check this out. In the midst of all of this persecution, in the midst of all of this persecution, they use the word of God to enact God's will. They cited Psalm 2. The Bible is so good, it's in error that you can use parts of the Bible to support another part of the Bible. They use Psalm 2. When you say, why do the Gentiles rage and the people's plot futile things? That's Psalm 2. Think about it. People are always seeking to shut down the church. Yeah. And some people in the church are seeking to shut down the church. Yeah. Because they're not in the church. Right. Yes, they're just at the church. They come to church out of ritual. They come to church because they have nowhere else to go. They come to church because their mama went there. They come to church because grandmama went there. They come to church because they ain't got nowhere else to sing. They were banned from the strip club and the nightclub. Now they got to come to church. <laughs> so they ain't got nothing else to do. So the thing about it is, is that, and they said people plot to undermine the word of God to stop it. And Jesus knew this was going to happen because these people killed our Lord and Savior because God had already said that this was going to happen. 
This had to happen so he can get up on the third day with what? All power. See, the kings of the earth and their stand and their rulers assemble together. Isn't it amazing how they can come together and try to rectify a situation and then leave God totally out of it? COVID. All right. MRSA, SARS, the flu. They come together and they think they can do all this. They can do all this. They're looking at prophets. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Instead of trying to talk to the prophets. All right. All they're concerned about is what can we get out of it. So in essence, they slow down production. In essence, they say they can't do this. In essence, this is impossible. In essence, people steal stuff, leave stuff out, do all this. Why? To incite mass panic. Why? Because God is not in this. Then you wonder, well, why should we be worried? You shouldn't. People say, that pastor, that's impossible. You shouldn't be worried. Because one thing is certain. You have a sunrise and a sunset. Right. And nothing, nothing, nothing that anybody can do can make that sunset come any faster than God wants it to. That's right. Now, you might do some things that are contrary to the will of God and inflict unnecessary harm and torture yourself, trying to end your own life or do things silly like parasailing and bungee jumping and skydiving and if you do those things I'm not saying that they bad for you I'm saying they're horrible for you but I will not do them go forward if that's what you want to do I'm not tying a string to my behind and jumping on no bridge I'm not going to trust no parachute that I didn't pack and I sure can't swim and the shark ain't going to never use me for a snack now the thing about it is the thing of it is saints of God is that we have to pray with the boldness that these saints did so that God can work that supernatural manifestation in our lives. We got to come together. And in studying this, it came to me, I think about it this way. I remember when I was in junior high back in the day, Nathan Hale, we played this game. It was really organized war with balls that we played dodgeball. It was called Bombardi. But the whole goal of the game was to not get hit by the ball if you couldn't catch the ball. See, the problem with most Christians is they don't ever want to catch the ball. Okay. The enemy was throwing at you. They want to die. They want to go, whoop, see, I'm skinning in. I turn sideways, I disappear. But the thing about it is, is this. You don't want to, you always want to die. You always want to die. You always want to die. Do you realize that all the times God is throwing things at you to make you better you? Do you realize that God is throwing things at you to help you understand that God is in control? Do you realize a lot of times we don't want, I don't want to, I don't want this to happen. I don't want that to happen. This can't happen. God can't let this happen. Who are you? All right. That this can't happen. People dying ain't new. People getting sick ain't new. People going bankrupt ain't new. And guess what? One of these days, one of those things is going to be you. Yes, Lord. So the thing about it is, is this. That my body game will go on. People would throw the ball as hard as they can. Throw the ball. Look at this way. Satan is throwing problems at you. Satan is throwing problems at you. You duck. You missed that one. You duck. You missed that one. This one coming at you. Some people do this. Ah! And the devil wins. Yeah. Instead of being a soldier, throw what you got. Ooh, I got my God. All right. My God got me and he got this. You can't dodge everything that's thrown at you. You don't expect prayer to actually stop God from manifesting his presence in your life to orchestrate a plan to make you a better Christian. If you look back in the Bible, Abraham left his home of earth to go someplace he'd never been, and he left his family and all his safety and comfort, and we got a lot of cowards now, 25, 30 years old, ain't never left their mama basement at. All right. Then when mama get old, guess what they can't do? Help mom. He left the land. He went somewhere. Look at Gideon and the judges. He went out there with 300 people and did what a lot of people can't do with a legion. All because of what God said. Yeah. Look at how Paul was converted to Damascus Road and wrote three fourths in the New Testament approximately. My math might be off for you scholars. But the thing about it is, is because God empowered him to be able to do it. Yes. Sometimes the problems that you have in your life and the difficult people in your life are not something you should be seeking to remove. You should be doing exactly like they're praying for boldness to deal with the idiots. Yes. The wisdom and the wherewithal because everybody, every weed is in your garden and you'll never go away. Every problem in your life ain't going to never go away. But what you pray for is for God to give you the strength, the resilience, and the wherewithal to be able to stand in the midst of the storm. To stand 
in the midst of the chaos and the lies. To stand in the midst of the dissension, the discord, and the resentment and the bitterness because you won't give in to their pettiness and participate in it and not speak to them. And shout out all kind of bad postings about them. You won't respond. You live out that old elementary corner saying, you rubber. And what you knew, I'm rubber. Whatever you say to me bounces off me and sticks to you. Guess what? That might work in this case. Say what you want about me. I ain't going to say nothing about you. Because you know what? You ain't important enough to me in my life for me to give you residence in my heart, my soul, my mind. If God wants you there, God will put you there. But what I'm going to pray for is that God gives me the strength to stand in the midst of all of your onslaught that the enemy see, may seek to devour my soul. But you know what? I know that my God, my God, my God is in control of my destiny. And I place my life fully in his hand. I ain't part of Satan's plan. He might plan for me, but guess what? I always got plan A, and that's Jesus. We must be learning from this. And the other thing I really want to say, because I know we're trying to get home to see the Cleveland Browns. I won't be going to get home. I'm not a Browns fan, and I've been scolded by church members about that. I'm a Dallas fan. I'm not a Browns fan. I'm a Dallas fan. I admit it. I've been a Dallas Cowboy fan from back in the day to Roger Stauber. I, it's, been, it's been a long, tedious journey, but they got Super Bowl ring. Long, tedious journey. They got a lot of long, tedious journey. All right, now, but the thing about it is, is this. I'm not a hater. I'm going to congratulate. I think it would be great for the city of Cleveland, for the Cleveland Browns, to bring a championship home. Amen. I think that would be an awesome thing. I live here. Why wouldn't I want this city to survive and thrive? Maybe if they stop celebrating, they'll stop shooting each other at the gas stations on the weekend. Maybe if they start celebrating, they'll stop trying to go, get together in these little bootleg nightclubs, shooting each other up and acting crazy. Maybe if they start celebrating, maybe they'll go get some skills to get a job and quit trying to rob other poor people, trying to take something from somebody who don't have anything. So the thing about it is, I'm not, I'm not a hater, I'm a congratulator. I really want somebody in our conference to win. If, if Dallas can't win, I want somebody in my conference to win. Secretly, I'm a Green Bay fan, too. I've been for years, too. But the thing about it is, is this. I, have, I can't help it. But the thing about it is, is this. I want us to understand something. The thing about these saints is this. And this is something I really want to drive home to you, church. And if I had my DeWalt screwdriver, I would drive it in real hard in your heart. I really want this to pierce your heart. The one thing that they did that is missing in the church today is that when people pray, they're not praying in the spirit. All right. All right. Because many people are members of churches, but they're not members of the Holy Spirit. All right. All right. You can tell by their thought, their action, their deeds. They come to church meetings to read mayhem and mischief and talk about their expressions of what they want instead of what God is trying to do in the church. All right. They're so busy competing against the pastor and the deacons that they don't have time to read the word of God. They only want to be showcased for what they can do. Yeah. They only want to do what they can do when they want to do how they want to do it, the way they want to do it, so they get all the credit. They'll get the credit, not in man. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So in essence, that ain't a Christian. That's, right. That's a well-dressed something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> There's some words that come to mind that I'm not supposed to think like that. <laughs> but the thing about it is, check this out in verse 31. He said, and they pray. We have to learn. Prayer in isolation is great. But when the like-minded and the people who are righteous actually join hands, I'm sad, i got to say this since it's being video and broadcasted. During COVID, we really can't hold hands unless you live in the house with that person. But the thing about it is, is this. When we come together and our hearts are pure and our hearts are not full of resentment, and our hearts are not holding anything contrite, contentious. If our heart will let go, some of us need to get some go lightly for our heart. Yes, yes. Some of you been and know what I know what that is, you'll know exactly what I'm talking yes. about. Ain't nothing light about that go. You go, but it ain't light. But the thing about it is, some of us need that enema for our soul. And some of us need to have our spirit drained out. So we can be able to truly touch and connect with God and each other. Yeah. Because part of the issue here is that if I'm holding anything against you in the Lord's Prayer, God doesn't have to listen to my prayer. That's right. That's right. How 
can I get forgiveness when I won't forgive? Yeah. How can I ask God to move in my life when I won't do anything to help anybody that I see in person? People say, I love God, but I can't stand you. Uh -huh. Well, I created by God. Yeah. So if you don't like me, guess who else you got a problem with? God. As messed up as I am, I'm still God's grace oh, yeah. in action. So in essence, saints, if we really want to change society, if we really want to change our families, if we really want to do the things that we say we want to do, we, stop, we have to stop being punks right. and be bold. So many of us placate people in our families trying to make them feel good about S.I.N. Seriously, ignorant uh -huh. news. Because we don't want to upset them. I stand here to tell you today that on the day that God calls their number and they own their way to hell, they're going to wish yes. to high heavens that you would have upset them mm -hmm. to the highest level of upsetativity that was possible. Yes. Because they need to know that they need to know who they know. They need to know who Jesus is. Yes. And stop trying to make people feel good about being wrong. Yes. I don't care if it is your child. I don't care if it is your boo, your spouse. Stop trying to make them feel good yes. about being wrong. Amen. You either for God or against God. Right. Stop trying to fix everything. Everything ain't fixable. Some stuff got to be cooked longer for it to get tender. Right. The same is true with our spirit and our soul. We have got to stop thinking that God is that parachute. I'm in a problem. i got a problem. Proof. But if you ever notice this, and I know I've experienced this myself a number of times, that if God is with you in the midst of the storm, there is this peace that comes upon you. Like you've never experienced before. There is a peace beyond measure in the midst of it all. And sometimes we become so down trying to question God because someone close to us, something happened to them. Do you realize that you're responsible for the outcome of your own life? Yeah. Do you realize that only you can get you into heaven? Yeah. Mama can pray. Daddy can pray. Grandma and Grandpa can pray. Auntie yeah. can pray. But until you pray, until you accept Jesus for yourself, ain't too much going to really happen yeah. other than the fact that while you're here, you was reaping the benefit of some of those prayers. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. But until you speak for yourself, and know who God is for yourself, you won't receive all the benefits that God has for you. Say to God, we got to stop playing. We, we got to stop playing and thinking that God is just going to do it any, way, any kind of way because we want. And we need to stop playing around with the, those we say we love. If you have somebody around you that's at home right now that's in bed, and they didn't work last night or didn't just get home this morning, you just let them lay in bed, and you come to church, or they don't tune in the church, do you really love them? <laughs> you got to sit down and ask that, especially a minor. Do you? When do they get to live somewhere for free and then get to choose their own destiny? <clears throat> when is that possible? And then people always say, well, my child paying to live with me, they ain't paying no real rent. Stop. <laughs> Quit playing. They're paying four or $500 a month. Where you going to live for $405 a month? You ain't going to live on 30 you're not. That's six fifty and up. So you they're not they're not in the door. So in essence, get them to church. They're playing the game. We play so many games with people, trying to make them feel good. And this is what they did here. They got together. They prayed. They shook. The room shook. They were looking for a supernatural manifestation yeah. of Jesus working in their lives. And see, you know what? And this didn't save them. They weren't praying for the Spirit to take away everything. They were praying for the Spirit to give them the power. Yes. To be able to persevere and to keep going mm -hmm. and to push forward and to push on and to pray and have the spirit of witness to be able to go out into this world and tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Who are you told lately about how good God is? Who have you really testified to lately about how good God is? Who, how, who, how have you ministered to somebody by the way you act? How do you demonstrate your presence? How is your countenance? Are you someone that when you walk in the room, people go like, mm. are you somebody people are around? Hey, you are all right. It ain't because you're good looking, because at one time I used to be good looking. I was having this discussion at work the other day, and luckily I found a picture of my wife and I from 35 years ago, and I almost tried to charge admission for it when the women was looking at it. They, they were like, oh my God, you was, I know, don't say it, because that's a Title IX at work, you can't say I'm fine. But the thing about it is, I know this at one time, I had muscles and all that, but we can't always be what we used to be. 
But we sure can become what God wants us to be. Because this is a lifelong journey. Saints, we must never give out. And we must never give in on who we are in Christ. We need to come together as a church and we need to pray. We need to first pray that God take away anything, any vices, any anger, any resentment, any tattling, backbiting, anything in our heart that's stopping us from being in true fellowship with God. Because people wonder, my prayers are never being answered because they're not praying the right spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. You can't make God do anything that he don't want to do. What he's trying to do is get you to pray to him to signal him that you are ready for something to happen, maybe. Mm -hmm. And it can't be selfishly motivated. It can't be selfishly motivated. I want a mansion in the yacht. Why? 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 So you wonder, well, I prayed for God to cure me, but they didn't cure them. That don't mean you ain't going to live longer than them. That's right. That don't mean that you're not going to be blessed more than them. You're trying to remove one aspect of your life, when in reality, if we all, those of us that are getting older now, you realize that when something else goes wrong, something else is going to take its place anyway. Right. As soon as you think this is over, here comes something else. Not my right. toes hurt. Mm -hmm. Why they hurt? I ain't kicked the ball since 72. The thing about it is, things hurt. It is, this is a part of life. It's a progression. We just keep going and we keep trusting God and we keep coming together in prayer. And one of the things I can really say that I'm really honored about being a pastor of this church in the morning when we get those inspiring texts that are going out where the circle of women are inspiring each other and you got Evangelist Coleman on the internet putting uplifting messages when everything else is on, 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 on Facebook is actually downgrading or talking about trying to sell something that's totally unnecessary. Every once in a while I get caught up. You mean I can have muscles like that in six weeks? No, it ain't real. But uh, I got I thought of the day I did it. Uh, but the thing about it is, is this. Is this. Yeah, I'm human. But the thing about it is, is this. We need to continue to connect. We need to continue to pray. We need to be prayer warriors. We need to be strong and resilient in our faith. We shouldn't be seeking the God to take away every pain in our life. We need to be seeking God to give us the strength and the courage to give us. You hear Paul talking about perseverance all the time. You hear Paul talking about and finish the race. The race is not just to the swift, it's to the strong and the determined. Many of us in here have overcome so many great obstacles. Many of us in here have achieved awards and recognition. Not because we didn't put in the work. If you don't put in the work, you don't expect to receive the reward. If you put in the work, God will reward you in due time. Yeah. See, you know what the thing about it is? A lot of us have been protected by so many things. Most people don't even think about it. People think about it. Well, I don't know why. Why this happened to me? Why this happened to me? I personally know somebody at my job one day was complaining about she couldn't find her car keys. Well, on the route that she normally goes to work, ironically, that day, if God had to put her car keys in her hand, there was a five car part up and four people passed away. Then she was in the office and best believe I was real bold. I went right in at her. All right. She was like, well, how, do you, how could God, God save your life? Because yes, at that time, you would have been at that intersection. Yes. If God was not looking out for you, and ironically, you had your keys in your hand, you turned around, guess what? They were not there. So many people have been blessed by God in ways which they think are yes, annoying, right. but God is actually yes, blessing right. you. Yes. If God give it to you, he can take it away. Yes, right. Be thankful for the time that you had. Be thankful for the time that God gave you with it. Be thankful that God did what he did. How many people, you know what, some of us, they used to go to clubs sometimes. I remember one time down at the club center. Joe might not know what that is. I was in there kicking it. Yeah, I went there. The thing about it is, one day I, went, I was in there and I bent over because my shoes had came loose. You know those Georgia routines back in the day with the cork heel? It had came loose. I was on the ground breaking it down like this guy. I had the dog down on one leg. I was down on one leg like that. And I had spun around and my shoe was about to come off. And I ducked down. As soon as I ducked down, two bullets came over my head because somebody was shooting because somebody was dancing with his girlfriend. Then he realized that God had to give me the dog to break the leg down, spin around like this. And two bullets looked at right there in my head. I looked back at my life right now and I realized that God was looking out for a fool. Did I go back in there again? No, I did not. The club center was not the spot I was going to go to. That I don't know all the time that God rescued us from dust. We have a tendency to want to go back there again. Club center closed down right now. The Roach infested place. Should have never been there, but hey, it's in the hood and you can probably real good in the hood. Now you need to get out of the black jacket. But the thing about it is, believers are supposed to be prayer warriors. Believers are supposed to be earnest in the way we live our lives. Believers are supposed to be praying for our families, our homes, our communities, our churches. And we're supposed to be praying for the people that we don't like. We're supposed to be praying in the situations that are giving us the most amount of trouble. Do you realize oftentimes when you are in the midst of trouble, God is trying to get your attention. God is trying to promote you to be able to prepare you for the next destination in life. Your greatest fear should be if you don't have anything going on in your life. That everything is easy peasy. They're still saying that, right? 
And it is a true fact through the prayer lowers your stress level. Prayer allows you to let go and let God. Yeah. Prayer helps us to open ourselves to be able to forgive people for the petty things that they've done. We all must realize that we are human and we make mistakes. Prayer helps us to develop a relationship with God. Prayer provides us answers. Prayer helps us find a direction in our lives. Prayer gives us the strength to avoid temptation. Prayer provides you with the wisdom you need to live this Christian life. Prayer gives you the strength during the storms of life. Prayer awakens your connection to Christ. Prayers should not be a really need. We pray it when you say, my father, my father. Prayer should be desired to be hope. Prayer should have a purpose. Prayer should come from power that only God can give. And prayer should be packed with the promises of God. Prayer to have the power to emanate from a heart of prayer. Your prayer should be strengthening your heart. Your prayer should be empowering you to go out and speak in the name of Jesus. The prayer for the righteous of man of but you got to be righteous. You got to quit playing. And if you really want to know how to lead a Christian life, and people always wonder, how can I do this and I don't know what to do? Go out and help somebody. Yes. Help somebody. Yes, sir. Every time we help somebody, we go in the grace of God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. Every time I help somebody, I see that what I thought was bad was not as bad as I thought it was. Yes. Every time I help somebody, my eyes are open in a new way to be able to see how so many people are struggling with how I thought I had a knife in my back. They got a bayonet in there because somebody's still pushing. Prayers must be rooted in the word of God. Prayer warriors are needed to pray boldly to heal our, our people and our nations. Prayers are needed to help people to return to God. Prayer warriors are needed to see the word of God alive in their lives. You must see the word of God in your life. Prayer warriors must see themselves as servants of God and merchants of hope. Prayer warriors want to please God. For God to move to heal our land. For God to fix what's going on in our country. For God to that, we need to come together and pray together so that we can shake the foundation of this nation. We can shake the foundation of this church, our families, and our community. We need to confront moral turpitude. We need to confront structured racism. We need to confront profiling. We need to confront criminalization of complexion. We need to confront the existential polarization of a segment of society. We need to confront the lies that are perpetuated about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We need to pray for both. We need to have expectation when we pray. My Father is now out in heaven. Hallelujah.
I see we got some young people in here, and I will give you this that I didn't explain it for the old people to understand. Here we go. Prayers should be like this. Some of y'all might have did this last week. Go back. And if you didn't, today would be a good day to start. You went into the bubble bath last week. When you took that bath, you came to a tub. The tub would be the church. You put in water, that would be the faith. You put in the bubbles, that would be the spirit. You got into the faith and the spirit. And you washed off your outward sin. But that inward was still there. You washed it off. Why did you get off? Because you want to get that dirt off you. And some of you are about to smell good and love bad. Check this out. Some of you get out of the tub, you smell sexy for 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden, you start to get dirty again because now you put back on the road you had on three weeks ago. But the thing about it is, but during the time that you reverse in that tub, in that water, and in them bowls, and the Spirit of God is assembling an office to those bowls, they're emanating and effervescing all around you. And they seek to remove all the impurities and the external aspect of you. And then you rinse yourself off. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Such that all of this dirt can leave you. And then you stand up in this water and you've been renewed because all of the dirt that was on you has been removed. And then you step boldly out of this tub and you are now clean. Prayer was that to us. Prayer should exile from us the things that are dirty. Prayer should exile from us the things that are unclean that are not worthy of someone who says that they are child of God. You need to bathe yourself in prayer. You need to spend time in the word of God so the spirit of God can cleanse you of all those thoughts of unrighteousness such that you will be able to step up into this church boldly, righteously. You'll be able to step into the grocery store boldly and righteously the beauty salon, the barber shop, wherever you can go, you'll be able to take God with you because your outside might be clean, but until you take Jesus, that inside can be dirty as it will be. Come to Jesus and let Jesus heal you and cleanse your heart and your mind so that your prayers can be heard. Let God cleanse you so that God can restore you to what you intended to be. Let God touch your heart, your mind, and your soul, and your spirit in a matter such that your mind is stayed on Jesus. Saints, come to Jesus while his blood is still running warm in your hands. God is waiting on you to come to him as we open the doors of the church. Come to Jesus and give God the glory. Give God the do. Because you know what? We always hear, can't nobody do you like Jesus. And it's true. But when you learn how to pray, when you learn how to pray in the power of the Spirit, we can shake up the lives of so many people. We can shake up the very fire of our civilization and society. Because we know that with God, all things are possible. And if you trust God and you love God, don't put off coming to Jesus. Don't be trust in him. Let God know that you can. Let God know that you love him. Let God know that you will put your life in his hand. He gave you the life. And he gave you life. Without it costing you anything. Come, come, and trust God. Give God the glory. He will make your life better. And he will. 
church in prayer. Because we always see God will take care of you. Amen. Amen.
wrapped off the sermon. He said, oh, I heard it. Oh, I heard it. Oh, I heard it. Oh, I heard Saints of God, before we go, we had a good time. We could get home and fry some chicken or fish and get ready for that. Uh, I spoke to Deacon Moss this morning at Atlanta. There will be some form of a black history program. It will just be a video and segments and produce on the church website uh, for us to do it. And the reason we put it on the church website is because we're not worried about being blocked. If anybody does a song. Uh, so, uh, oh, they're mute. They've been doing that lately. Uh, so it will be on the church website. So if anybody wants to contribute anything, uh, you can email him or you can email me if you're going to do it. Everything's not finalized yet, but it will be. It's been going too well. We have too much talent here. And I still remember uh, thinking that's Gilliam playing and Angela Johnson rolled up and asked the sister on the last year before. And a little bit and all that good, all that good in the play. So we definitely don't want to let off that good. Good ride. Hey, I'm going to be Oh! What? Oh. 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 Afros unite. But uh, we, we're, we're planning on going at it. The uh, praise dancers uh, are free to contribute uh, in any way that they feel appropriate. I trust the advisors. You want to do two or three segments, or you want to say something, put it on the advisor. You know, uh, it's just open. We're producing, get it out. And uh, I think it's fun when churches come together for stuff like that. Because 10 years from now, we can look back at it and be like, ooh, I did that. Yeah, right. That's always fun. Y'all you know the parents and pictures talking about our family unions. I mean, you, I remember this one picture they had of us sitting on this thing, and we had half rows, like plaid shirts on, and striped pants, and polka dots, and stacks. I'm so glad we did it. And nobody has recollection of it. It's so good, because we look horrible. But uh, our grandparents thought we were cute. I would be remiss, too. I was given a note to pray for it. If I say the name wrong, please, please. Give me. Dr. Ron Healy, look. Uh, then we pray uh, for, I'm assuming this is a young man. It's Tracy's cousin. Tracy's cousin? All right. We're going to pray for the crime. Healy, look. Am I saying the name right? Yeah. Okay, how I say it? Dakaron. Dakaron Healy, look. So, with all that being said, there's always saying, Saints, we don't necessarily need to know what's wrong. Sometimes we do that to be nosy. Right. Actually, probably ninety percent of the time, because if they told you, can you fix it? Right. What you gonna do? You can't do nothing about it. But the thing about it is, we don't know what, what Mr. Little, uh, Hilly Little needs. But let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you put your arms around the crown of Hilly Little in a mighty way, dear God. For this individual is in need of prayer. We don't know for what. We don't know why. But we know that you are the answer to all prayers, and we know that we unite and we stand strong on your promises. And we give unto you our true righteousness, knowing that you are our source, our strength, and our life. That you will grant the family and him solace, and you'll be able to give them the peace they need to maintain, sustain, or deliver him in any way that you see fit, dear God. We just ask you, O oh Lord, to just be with them. Touch them, O oh Lord, and all of those that, are, that love this young man, and those of us at the church who are praying, dear God. We just want all of this to turn out the way that you want it to turn out. And we just ask you, dear God, to bless him in the mighty way. We pray this in all things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Nothing wrong with prayer, and we should all be praying for one another as I pray for you all daily. Uh, please hold me up in prayer as I go back to the Lions Day in Tuesday. And let's see you move in the round. I'm, not, I'm, I'm a little more than a snack right now. I ain't trying to be snacking on <laughs> So uh, we go back. Those of us who have to go to work, we go to work and we put the edge of protection of God around us. That's all we can do. As we have to live our lives that God has blessed us with. Because God knows that we have to go back to work. And we're in this environment that we're in. I pray that God bless and keep you all as we are expecting the tumultuous transition to power on the 20th. I pray that it does not manifest, and if it does manifest, like in the scripture lesson today, God will make a way somehow. Yes, sir. And it only does what he wants it to do. 
So let us not be afraid. And we need to pray for the incoming president and vice president of the administration. We need to bathe them in prayer so we can shake them up. Yes, sir. We know that their decisions should not be governed by the top 1%. Because we are the ones on our backs and everything is supported. We need to just bathe them in prayer and keep them in our prayers at all times. City officials, county, whoever, and pray for one another because we need this place to get ready. And I want to debunk another bit. Bible study, you don't have to have your camera on. You don't have to have your camera on for Bible study. Uh, I know some people said they were worried they want nobody to see them like that. Uh, I don't know what that is, but so leave that alone. Is that just tune in? We have a good time with Bible study because with the way it is, maybe with the slides, everything else is really nice. I got to be a nice person. We're we'll probably be back in person. We'll say this again around the first week of February. Mark, if we don't have a snowstorm like we do in the first week of February, because the days will be about 30 minutes long for about the first week of February. It won't be dark until about 6:30. Again. So, uh, the week will be virtual for the next two, three weeks. With all that being said, before we get out of here, we would be remiss if I didn't do the right hand of fellowship with our new church member, Amen. Sister Little Bellie Hope. Now, I'm going to say this. Due to COVID, and this is being video, we cannot walk around the church and hug and kiss and embrace one another. If she doesn't mind, she can come down front with me. I'm a nephew, and she ain't allergic to me because we always together anyway. <laughs> so, uh, and we're contagious for one another, but we just got it. It is what it is. And you'll come down front, and we're going to stand where we are, and we're just going to say welcome to the church. We're just going to stay where we are when she comes down front. Everybody at Bible study Wednesday. If not, we'll see you here again next Sunday. May God be with you all in spirit and in truth. And for God is with us forever and today. And remember, pray. Pray in power. Pray in the spirit of power with expectancy. And there's nothing wrong with getting together with other people with a pure heart to pray to our Lord and Savior for change to occur. May God be God rest and protect us all. To him who was able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, who alone be his wise, be the glory, the majesty, the dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. May we all say, Amen.